Christ is risen. Thank you. Uh, today, um, today we heard the, the gospel, the, the reading uh, about uh, I am the way. And uh, you know the um, the um, during the uh, the Lent, the Great Lent, there is a journey, and during uh, the Holy Fifty Days, there is another journey. So during the Lent, it's a journey of uh, of us uh, repenting of the of the person or in the individual is repenting and offering repentance. And during the Fifty Days. It's a journey for the person is uh, having the joy of the resurrection. Uh, and we have seen, uh, we have seen this, um, we have seen this actually uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Old Testament. And God is actually is uh, telling us that each one of us has his own journey. And uh, sometimes, whenever actually somebody go in a journey, he needs uh, essential things. Like uh, he needs light, he needs, uh, he needs um, uh, bread, he needs to eat. So when he gets hungry, he needs, uh, he need, um, he need uh, uh, like a direction. Nowadays, like in the, in the past, we used maps, right? Nowadays, we use GPS. Sometimes even we use like a, uh, like a Google map or uh, like a more uh, like a advanced, uh, you know, guidance. So how about our spiritual journey? We need also uh, spiritual guidance in order to see the way, in order to go through the way. And the church is actually uh, giving us this journey during the 50 days. Uh, it starts with uh, Christ, our faith, and then uh, Christ is the bread of life, and then he's a way of life, and then the conquer of the world. So the church is actually preparing us to receive the Holy Spirit in the Pentecost feast. And this is our daily journey and our life journey. We want to actually just see the way in order to approach, in order to approach uh, to the uh, heavenly Jerusalem. So there is actually a verse in Galatians that says, your life is hidden in Christ. Your life is hidden in Christ. And if you study the, uh, the, um, the epistles of St. Paul, you will see the, 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 the word in Christ repeated so many times. So uh, the theology of St. Paul is related to us become in Christ. So I just had a quick, uh, maybe uh, an example or uh, like a, a vision aid just to understand how can we be in Christ. So if the church is this big jar, and we are this cup, right? And um, if we are outside the church, we can be hit by anything, right? And this cup or us could be break. So we are breakable outside of the environment or outside the, um, the, 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 the church environment. And if we actually go inside the church environment, okay, we also could be reached somehow, right? So something can hit us, right? But if we are immersed in Christ inside the church, try to hit us, we will be protected. This is how can we be in Christ. This is very simple. So simple analogy. If we are outside of church, outside of Christ, for sure we'll be hit. If we are inside the church, sometimes we are in the church and not in Christ. We're not abiding Christ. And also we can be easily hit. But if we are immersed in Christ, we'll be protected. And this is as simple as that.
So simply we need to be in Christ in order to be protected. In order to abide in Christ, we have to be immersed and we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we receive the Holy Spirit uh, on the baptism day, but um, also the Holy Spirit works in us on a daily basis during our life. So the people of Israelite went from, took the journey from, uh, from uh, Egypt to the heavenly Jerusalem and they were in God, right? They were in God. They needed a heavenly food and they received that. They needed uh, a way or a guidance. They needed a light. So God provided with them with pillar of light. They needed uh, uh, a, like a, a guidance in order to receive, to go and see and uh, find the, 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 the earthly promised land. And uh, as a matter of fact, this gospel was read from John 10. And John 10, it says, I am the way. So I am the way to reach what? To reach somewhere, to reach the, the house or the promised land or the place where you actually want to end up to be. So in order to reach this place, you will find a door in front of you. So who is the door? Christ is the door. If you go back to John, John, uh, this was John 14. If you go back to John 10, you will find he said, I am the way. So I am the door. I am the door. I am, I am the good shepherd. And I am the door of the shepherd. So how could he be the door? How could Christ be the door? In the past, in the old days, uh, uh, around uh, you know Jesus' time, that uh, like our Christ, like uh, Christ, uh, our Lord Christ uh, time, the shepherd used actually sometimes sleep in front of the door. Or sleep actually as a door, you know, to protect, you know, uh, around, uh, to protect the fence. So the fence who actually keeps the the livestock where the shepherd, where the sheep are. The shepherd would actually sleep in front of the door. So when a thief come to take, or a fox come to take one of the sheep, one of the sheep. Who's actually protecting the sheep? Not just the door, the shepherd himself. So we are seeking to be in Christ and then follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit in order to reach to the door. And then when we reach the door, he will know us as his shepherd and he will open for us. And then we'll be able to enter the promised land. So each one of us has a journey and each character in the, you know, in the gospel, in the, in the Bible, uh, Old Testament and New Testament, and also in the, um, in the uh, you know, church fathers, each one has a journey. And uh, maybe you can just, uh, as a homework for you and for myself, you can pick one character and, uh, I, you know, try to uh, see how is this journey uh, took place and how was he actually he was uh, able to uh, to be you know in god in, in christ and to be guided to the heavenly jerusalem and to reach to the door and he was capable to enter so one of the uh, you know important character that i actually like so much is elijah Elijah actually had a very interesting life. And he used to, just with one word from his mouth, he can open the sky for rain to come. He can close the sky. And um, even, um, even when God wanted uh, rain to come, uh, the God's beauty and God's you know, politeness towards humanity, he did not because he told Elijah the rain will not come until you say. He went and he said to Elijah, come and say, just rain come. 
Like, didn't God, wasn't God able to just pour the rain on, on the earth without his permission, without Elijah's permission? He could, right? And it's, it's his right. But because God said so. So from God's, uh, you, know, you know, honoring Elijah and honoring his, uh, his word, he said, God, Elijah, come and say, you know, just let be rain. And he, actually there was rain. And then Elijah goes back to, to the, uh, before, like during the famine, he goes to this, uh, you know, lady and he says, um, uh, you know, just uh, uh, bring uh, the, uh, the, the, the food that you have and there's no food. So he says, okay, the, the oil will not, uh, the oil will last forever. Uh, the oil will last and the bread, the, 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 the bread will last as well, right? And it did. So every single time he says something, it happens. Every time he says something, it happens. So he's walking with God. He was walking in God. And all the time, you know, even when there was a challenge between the people of Israel and, uh, you know, the, the people of, um, of uh, Baal, okay, he was able to, you know, just beat them by just asking the heaven to send, uh, you know, to send fire to take the sacrifice, right? And uh, with one word, all the sacrifices that was offered and even the water around, you know, that they actually had, it was actually just consumed because of one word from Elijah. But you know what? Sometimes we could, as a humanity, even though we're walking and we're strong, Sometimes we could be weak, weakened. Something could make us weak. Like God is not just saying uh, you will be strong forever and you will be okay forever. There are some points of time and there are some weak points and those weak points are, are okay for us as a human being. So Elijah had one of these weak, weak, weak points and um, he was asked, you know, uh, to to leave the city, otherwise, uh, like he like he, he was like, he, like uh, Jezebel, Jezebel wanted to kill him because he killed the people of the, the the priests of the Baal, right? So he got scared. He got scared for his life. So Elijah, the great and strong prophet, who had a very uh, powerful um, powerful uh, way of uh, of dealing with the heaven, open the heaven, close the heaven, uh, bring uh, rain, bring water, bring fire, bring blessing to people, even bring food from you know uh, uh, you know uh, the, the you know the uh, just a uh, bird. So all of this, all of this strength, just flipped into a weakness at one point. And in his weakness, God said, and that's okay. I would actually give you strength. And this is God's dealing and treatment with us. He gave us strength, even in our weakness. And he sent him an angel. And the angel provided him food. And he gave him strength. And uh, you think this was the end of his time. As a matter of fact, his weakness became strength afterwards. Because after Elijah, weak point, he was not even, like he even asked for death. But God did not give him death. He gave him a life. Like he's still alive till now, right? So God, so like somebody says, careful what you wish for, careful what you pray for too, right? So he, Elijah, one of the, one of the people who said, one, of, one from, the, from one of the people who said, I need to die. Like enough is enough. I need to die. But God kept him alive till now, right? He's in heaven. He went in a heavenly chariot. Not only that, but he asked him to go and get Elisha, Elisha, Elisha to continue the service. And um, his weak point made Elisha to become another prophet. And then Elisha asked for double spirit. So the double, the, the double spirit means 
double the service, double the ministry, and double the effort that Elijah was doing, it's actually been transferred to Elisha. And this was for the glory of God and for the continuation of the service in, uh, in, the, in, 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 the, in, in, in the community of Israel. And even Elijah, you know, remember how many miracles Elijah did? He did seven. So Elisha did how many? Fourteen, right? So Elijah did seven. And one of them, he raised one person from the dead. And Elisha raised how many people? Two, right? But surprisingly, also, because Elisha asked for double spirit, he, he actually performed 13 miracles in his life. So now is the, the number is broken. How could it be 14? He actually performed another miracle because of his bones. You know the story where, uh, with a story that uh, some people, after Elisha died, some people were carrying a dead person and they were walking outside of the city and they saw the enemies are coming to just attack them. So they got scared. So they didn't know what to do. So they actually threw the body in one of the, you know, uh, tomb, right? On one of the graveyard. And they flew. And for their luck, this graveyard was uh, the grave of Elisha, Elisha. So the guy actually woke up from dead and kept running with them. I don't know if they were running from the enemies or running from this guy, but I guess they were scared too, right? They were actually more terrified. So the point is, God is faithful even we are, when we are not faithful. God is faithful at all the times. God is always faithful. Even when Elijah said, enough, I want to die, Elisha was a, was, was a good coming out of the bad. So it's a bad situation. And out of this bad, in our way, God can bring good. God can bring life from death. Can, God can bring resurrection after after. The, the cross. So it's all good and it's all concepts and principles, but practically speaking, how can we apply this? How can we actually just take this and apply it in our day-to-day -day life? So I will take this from the uh, Catholic Epistle today, and it, uh, it reads three points. So three points we can just come up with as a practical exercise for us. So there are two things we need to do today, or this week. Homework for you, for, for all of us. Each one just pick a character from the, from the Gospel, from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and uh, just take it and uh, try to see how did he actually walk with God and he was actually how, how he was abide in Christ like here. So that's why he was protected. The second thing, practically speaking, in the Catholic Abyss, it says, and above all things, have fervent love for one another. Fervent love. So number one is love. And then number two, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Sometimes we could be hospitable, but with grumbling. With, you know, oh yeah, just, right? But without grumbling. This is, this is a condition. So without grumbling. And the third one as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good steward. Good steward. So the Catholic Epistle saying today is three things we need to do. Love, and this is actually what you guys are doing here in, at SMSK, right? You're offering love and genuine love. And this genuine love, it actually, you know, just generate hospitable uh, to one another, hospitable. So become hospitable, and this is uh, the, the 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 right flow. And the third the third thing, if we are hospitable, then we are becoming good steward. So three things: love, and the love will create hospitable hospitability, and this hospitability will will be actually able to emit uh, the light of Christ to bring others to, to him. And this is you know, the concept of evangelism, how to bring Christ, so how to bring people, how to bring others to Christ. 
through love. And this love will create hospitability. And if we actually create hospitability, we'll be able to become good stewards. So three things again, love, hospitable, becoming good steward. So L, okay. The second thing is H, hospitable. And the third thing is, you know, G, good steward, good stewards. So may God be glorified in his church and give you strength. And just remember the two things, our homework, I'll do it with you. I picked Elijah before, so maybe I can pick another character during this week as a homework. And uh, we can actually have this as a practical lesson. Love, the second one is what? Hospitable, the third one is good steward. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.